It is the morning after the debate and after a lot of discussion about a fairly poor performance, uh, there is a big event going on in Raleigh, North Carolina, as President Joe Biden tries to rebuild any momentum coming out of the debate. Uh, We're keeping an eye on this event Uh, that is going on there in North Carolina, which is another one of those swing states, just like Arizona, just like Georgia, just like Nevada, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and others. But the big question this morning, uh, and hello everybody, I'm Ron Hoon. This is Fox 10 Talks, and the show, after the show, we go on right at 10 a.m. here in the digital world uh, at fox10phoenix.com as well as on Fox Local Live. And then you can catch us all morning long and all day long, in fact, for weeks to come, uh, on uh, our YouTube channel as well. But the big talk this morning, and it's actually being talked about uh, openly, is whether or not Joe Biden, uh, based on last night's performance and some reported freakouts that are going on, Uh, Should he be replaced, and if so, by whom? We still have many months to go before the election, so keep that in mind. Coming out of the debate last night, that's going to be one of our top stories this morning. We are going to be talking about it, Uh, and it's interesting because the brand new odds are already out this morning. If it's not going to be Joe Biden, and there may be some soul-searching going on uh, (coughs) within the party, Who then would be most likely to carry the mantle between now and November? Well, we have the answer, and we invite you to stay tuned for that. That is going to definitely be one of our stories this morning. And then another one of the stories we're going to be talking about is this fire that is burning dangerously close to some homes up in the North Scottsdale Carefree area. Uh, There's some real concern about this uh, Boulder View fire as they're talking about it. We have our Dominique Newland, who has been doing a great job. She has been right on the scene. She's going to join us here in just the next couple of minutes. Also, did you see the Tesla that took a wrong turn and went pulled right onto the railroad tracks? (laughs) It's unbelievable. Somehow they got to iron out this autopilot driving situation. Plus... Just unbelievable pictures of a mini tsunami, basically. They call it a meteo tsunami. If you've never seen it, it happened in Michigan, of all places. That's coming up as well. But let's get right into our big story, which is the day after the presidential debate. uh, And the headlines are running the exact opposite of what the Biden campaign hoped he would be getting out of the first debate. You know, there was a question mark at some point as to whether or not there would even be any debates. And for a while, it was looking like there was not going to be a debate. Uh, And then all of a sudden, just sort of out of the blue one day, the headline hit that both sides had agreed to two debates, one in June and one in September. Totally different from the way it's normally run, where we really don't get into it until after the conventions. Uh, starting in around September, and then you go about three weeks, you have another one. Three weeks, you have another one, and there's enough time in between to kind of recalibrate. Well, this is it. That was the debate that is going to last all summer long. We're not even going to have the next debate until we get into September. So based on how things went last night, and, uh, you know, Vice President Kamala Harris and some of the interviews afterwards said uh, that she would admit he had a slow start, but then came on stronger later uh, in the hour and a half, uh, but that one of that those first answers where it looked like he was kind of just losing his train of thought, and talked about um, defeating or beating, uh, yeah, beating uh, Medicare. It's the whole, uh, just the whole answer was one that c- kind of seemed to put a little confusion into the air, um, and Donald Trump reacted to it, and people have been reacting to it ever since. Uh, But now the question is, okay, so who would they possibly turn to? This is fascinating. Ready? Here we go. Kamala Harris is one of those names that people are talking about. The other name is Gavin Newsom. And according to, I checked the latest odds this morning, and they're absolutely fascinating. Um, So, uh, you know, right now it looks like Joe Biden's odds to be the Democratic nominee, which had been running well over 90%, 
I mean, why would you not think they would be 90%, right? He clearly is racking up the delegates, and there's been, you know, a real move to keep any other Democrats kind of off the stage. Well, uh, Gavin Newsom is number one in the odds by a long shot because based on one night and a poor debate performance, we have seen the odds that Joe Biden will be the Democratic nominee drop from 92%. It's been that high uh, as into the 90s to this morning, 64%. That is a massive drop of 20 to 30 points. And Gavin Newsom is the clear number two. Uh, you know, he had his kind of showdown with uh, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida. So you had the governor of Florida and the governor of California. That was many months ago. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people have speculated about Newsom. And he's at 25%. His odds uh, increased dramatically. So he's now the clear number two choice at 25%. What about the vice president, you're thinking? Kamala Harris. Now, the thing about Kamala Harris is her uh, odds uh, barely budged. She's currently at 8%. And uh, she actually has a lower favorability rating than President Joe Biden, who's at 39%. Kamala Harris at 36%. So uh, she's not exactly climbing the, uh, you know, the odds maker odds right now. But at 8%, she is the, uh, she would be the choice number two. Newsom, choice number one. Kamala Harris, choice number two. If the Democrats, through some soul searching, decided they needed to replace Joe Biden at the top of the ticket. By the way, the only other names that I saw on this list, Hillary Clinton at 5%. Um, you know, but there is a, I, I, my take is there's a bit of a feeling that maybe um, we're at a stage where maybe people want some fresh new voices. So 5% is about it for her. And then beyond that, um, it's 4% for Gretchen Whitmer. Oh, I'm told that we have the newest images here of President Biden now up there on the stand along with Jill Biden. This is at the event. Uh, there in North Carolina, and she's going to be doing her introductions of the uh, of the president. Uh, you know, last night she said, of course, what are you going to expect the first lady to say? Uh, she said she thought Joe did great. So, uh, you know, the, it's interesting because the candidates were up there all alone. She couldn't get up there during the commercial breaks. Campaign staff couldn't, et cetera. But um, they did, obviously, uh, join on the stage afterwards, and uh, she took his hand and kind of uh, the two of them got off the stage after the debate. So we're going to keep an eye on that. That is for sure. Uh, hi, Celeste. Good Hello, morning. Hello, Ron. Good morning. Good How are you? you? I've great. missed you the last week. I know. Yeah, a little vacation time for you, huh? It was vacation. Yeah. Uh, we were playing soccer up in Seattle. Okay. Yeah, so that was nice. Yeah. Um, so I was just running through the odds of who the Democrats might choose mm-hmm. if, oh. um, you know, if they through some soul searching. You know, David Axelrod, he did say uh, specifically, he said there are going to be meetings, uh, you know, in response to uh, what happened uh, last night. And, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how all that goes. Well, after the debate. Uh, because CNN hosted it, correct? Yes. Okay, so after the debate on CNN, mm-hmm. there might have been one out of the nine people speaking oh. that spoke favorably yeah. about the president's performance. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody was v- questioning whether or not. they. All of them said. Eight out of the other nine? Uh, you, all really? Of, yeah, most of the people on that panel, okay. most of them said, I've been getting text messages from Democrats around the country saying we're worried that if he's on the ticket, I may not win. Okay. Yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting to see, to hear both sides. And did you see what RFK Jr. had on Twitter? I really wanted to hear his take, but I didn't see it. What is it, So on Twitter, he had, um, what he took was what CNN did, pretty much kind of recorded it, re-aired it, and then he inputted his response after Trump and Biden both gave their responses to a few questions. And John, uh, was it Stossel? Uh, Was he the one with ABC? He moderated. It was was like a mini debate. Is that right? There's a blast from the past. He had a live audience in the background, and it was, I think it was maybe 5.4 million people were watching live on Twitter right after 
uh, the the debate that we all watched on television on CNN. Right. Uh, he had it on Twitter. It was really an interesting concept. He's been big with young view, young voters. Right. And he's been big also in kind of using a lot of YouTube platforms and comedy you know, shows and things like that. You know, he's been popping up in very unique spots. Yeah. And so it's um I didn't like his Super Bowl commercial. Remember back mm-hmm. in the Super Bowl? It was I like do an remember. old ad for his, uh, what would be his uncle, right? Was it JFK. black and white? It was black and white portions yeah, of it, right? Yeah, it was right? like an old 1960s cartoon kind of. And yeah. I thought, that's a $3 million waste of money or whatever it is, $5 million, $6, yeah. $7 million, that kind of a thing. Uh, I think he him making a direct approach to the viewers saying, you know, both of these guys are out of touch. Uh, these political parties are too, uh, you know, corrupt mm-hmm. or whatever his arguments were going to be. Uh, that's, I think, would be a would be a better uh, way for him to advance things. Yeah, and I think it was really interesting. If you recall, one of the questions with the debate was about the op- opioid crisis. Okay. And both Biden and Trump mentioned, I think, the border and stopping the drugs at the border. Yeah. And his response in his debate, he called it the real debate. Um, he, he said, he said, he said, well, that's okay to stop it at the border, but we need to deal with what happens with people here in the States who are already dealing with the crisis. Okay. And what he said was really unique. I think they're doing this in Europe. Right. They're called, um, like, uh, farms, like, um, relief farms, or there are these farms really like where you mm-hmm. grow vegetables and these, you can go there and get healed from depression and anxiety and drug drug addiction they're almost like detox they're centers, almost like detox but in centers an agricultural setting exactly okay. and so he said we need more of those they've worked in europe they've worked overseas we need to attack the problem in ways like that not just stopping it at the border because you find people who are here already yeah um they're dealing with the issue and it's, okay. it's already coming across the border it was well, just yeah. a different unique take i think mm-hmm. when you take a look at the three of them yeah so uh, it's just interesting uh, in terms of the snap poll that was done right afterwards, CNN and SSRS, I believe it is, had a snap poll right afterwards. And who won the debate? 33 percent, only 33 percent said Joe Biden. Sixty seven percent said they felt that Donald Trump had won the debate. And let's face it. It was more on it was more style points than substance. There was not a lot of substance other than. Digging into each other's golf game. Thank you. Six handicap. My goodness. I know. Here I am trying to take <laughs> notes, and I'm like, who has the six handicap? Who has the eight? Whoa. What's happening here? Yeah, what's going Is that Tiger Woods? Like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. And then Trump says, let's not be children. <laughs> and Biden says, you're a child. <laughs> I mean, if the... Uh, you know, it was fantastic. I know. Uh, I mean, there was plenty of humor, that's for sure. All right, so Celeste, we're going to take a break, and our game plan now is to uh, take that quick break. Okay. Uh, we have uh, some live pictures coming in from a very beautiful spot. I don't believe you were on a vacation in. Oh, we're going to go to Hawaii. Hang on here. Ooh, I don't think Ron. you were on vacation in Hawaii, but we have a beautiful. That sounds view like a good idea, though. Of uh, America's fiftieth state. Mm-hmm. Ready? Here we go. Oh, look at that. We're going to take a break for. Welcome back. Great views from Hilo, Hawaii. I've been to Hawaii a couple of times, but I've never been there. That is, uh, boy, every every inch of Hawaii is beautiful. Those beautiful plumerias, right, Ron? Oh, is that what those are? Trees down in the bottom. Celeste, I've been thinking we need a plant expert (laughs) uh, here on the podcast. So you're you're nominated. Favorite topic. Good. Okay, let's talk about. We're going to move on from politics and talk about this big fire. Dominique Newland been doing a great job for us this morning on covering the Boulder View fire. Dom, we've got some images we want to share. Give us the latest on where things stand on this firefight, including where the main focus is uh, location-wise and uh, what they're going to try to do today to get this thing knocked down. Yeah, hey, good morning. Uh, So we were kind of out near, I believe it was 144th Street, uh, way, way back, kind of, there was not a whole lot out there. And when we were driving in, we could smell the smoke uh, really bad. It was a lot going on. And then two, just little fires kept popping up everywhere uh, due to how dry the vegetation was out there. And then also the wind started to pick up throughout the morning. And that was something that we really noticed. 
uh, throughout the day. So I have been checking uh, with the Arizona Department of Forestry and Fire Management all morning. They haven't really sent out too much. So all we have right now is just the information from last night where it was still at 0% containment. They said 2,500 acres had burned. But just from being out there, it seemed like those acres, it's really going to pick up. It's going to be a lot more than 2,500 uh, just due to all the small fires that kept uh, happening while we were out there. And it was moving really quickly east uh, due to those wind speeds. Also, when we were uh, driving up there as well, um, we saw a lot of neighborhoods and homes that had already been evacuated. One guy in a pickup, he actually uh, stopped and talked with us. And he said, do you have any idea on when these evacuations are going to be over? Mm. And we said, no, we're still waiting to hear word. And I said, was your home evacuated? And he said, yeah. And he was in his pickup truck, which is him and his dog. And, you know, just kind of looking helpless. That's all you can do uh, just when you're told to leave your home and trying to find a place to go and no word on, you know, when you can go back. So there's really a lot going on. Uh, we saw a fi- um, helicopter above as well who came and sprayed over one of the areas and they headed back. I'm sure they'll be out there uh, many times throughout today because as of right now, we don't know containment or if there is, I'm sure it's low just due to the weather conditions we have currently. Well, you know, I was talking with uh, folks photojournalist James Egbert a little while ago and he was telling me that there was the uh, front edge of the fire was within 25 feet of a home these are some for people who are not familiar with this part of the desert it's one of the most beautiful areas it's uh, pushing up toward the high desert far north end of the valley your elevation is as much as a thousand feet higher than you would be down here in the valley floor, say in the downtown Phoenix area. It is just so beautiful out there. But you've got homes that are that are built right into the natural desert landscape. And you can you can bet some of these homeowners are very worried. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they're right in the thick of the elements. And that's what, you know, makes her a beautiful scenery, but it's so scary to be right in the middle of it. And we saw when we were out there uh, doing some live reports, just kind of um, the leftover remnants and the burn sites, because everything was just dark brown. And we were looking at how close that fire did get up to some homes. Yeah, and basically, you know, right at the front door. So really scary situation uh, for folks out there and just seeing new ones pop up too. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a long day for these crews, safe to say. Yeah, no kidding. Boy, and that particular part of the valley between the Cave Creek Carefree area and over toward Bartlett Lake has just been hit time and time again. Dom, we appreciate your time. Great reporting. We'll watch for the rest of your reports later today on Fox 10. Yes, of course. You bet. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Boy, it's really, yeah. you know, Celeste, when you consider uh, just yeah. this one part of the valley over and over mm-hmm. being hit uh, by one fire after another. And, of course, they're investigating. It's possible it's human cause. Yeah, well, you have so many neighborhoods up there. I know it's hard to believe, but North Scottsdale is uh, runs about, might be about 40 minutes even north of the Loop 101. Yes. You know, it's, right. it's the city has really grown. Yeah. And a lot of it in that desert land. So uh, Dominique did a great job this morning covering that story. Okay, let's go to our next live view. Uh, this is, uh-oh, oh, oh, hold on a moment. Slash. What's happening? So Dean Fazzini on the live cam, uh, he has the power where he can zoom into anything. That's a McDonald's that's a, a good mile away from our camera, and you can still practically make out the make and model of every car at the parking and lot. And maybe even smell the French fries if we had smell of vision <laughs> But it looks like somebody else is building another fast food location. We hope they don't block our view of McDonald's. Uh-oh. Uh, McDonald's USA President Joe Erlinger is, spoke at something called the Wall Street Journal Food Forum. I would like to be assigned to cover oh, that, wouldn't you? I wonder if you could do a, your taste testing and uh-huh. like all the food. Sure. Okay. Right. These fries need a little more salt. <laughs> please. That kind of a thing. Crispier, please. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, the the crispier, the better when mm, it comes to fries. So good right? with the diet soda. Ron. Yes. Um, so anyway, he said he asked his team to test the McPlant burger. We didn't even know this was going on because it wasn't here. But it was all over their locations in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and in the San Francisco Bay Area. They started testing the McPlant. You know, everything's got to have the Mc... Yes. uh, To start it off What was it made out of, though? Uh, Well, plants. So, like, pothos plants or agave? Kale. (laughs) 
I don't know. <laughs> Black egg, beans. Eggplant. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Egg white powder. You know, actually, if it was protein. made out of like baked beans or pinto beans. It probably would be really good. I probably would eat that. But yeah. anyway, I don't. Anyway, <laughs> the testing started two years ago. 600 restaurants and the customers have spoken. All he's willing to say, is, it's not even close. He said, it was not successful. You are not going to see the McPlant on the burgers uh, there at your Mickey D's. That was I, a bad idea in that market, though. Like if you Dallas, think, if, yeah, if, yeah. If you want to like test sure. out a McPlant, correct. You need to take it to like San Francisco. Well, they were they were in the San Francisco Bay Area, which was smart. Not but Dallas. Then, I'm sorry, uh, Fort Worth is like Cowtown, yes. right? Yes. I mean, I think they answer to that. They're like big uh, cattle ranchers out in that area. Anyway, I say this, Celeste, do what you're good at. If you're McDonald's, you're good at regular hamburgers and fries. Thank and you. let somebody else experiment with the McPlant. And with the ice cream cones if the machines work. Did you see what happened in uh, Michigan? Now, I love the state of Michigan, and this is Holland, Michigan. You know, they've got those great lakes mm -hmm. out there. And I mean, it's big beach. quite spectacular. Well, they had a mini tsunami. It's called a Meteo meteo tsunami so this actually because when a tsunami happens ron yeah, right this is usually the the ocean the, the lake floor yeah, then because right. this be right because the water kind of is sucked out yeah and then it come rolls back in well so what we're looking at here is normally underwater well right uh that's right up against it but look you're starting to see it beginning to emerge you can are in the center port of the picture but yes. watch this ready here's the before there's oh, the after oh then it comes back holy in. holy cow yes. This is apparently a phenomenon, uh, and NOAA says that meteo tsunamis are just gigantic waves triggered by air pressure disturbances associated with fast-moving weather events like thunderstorms and squalls. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Well, the, the lakes are so huge, it's like the ocean. Yes, right. Right? Yeah, I mean, you're standing on one end of Lake Michigan. You can't look across and see Chicago. Yeah, no. Right? I mean, it's just too far. They're too big. It's humongous. Uh, by the way, speaking of the weather, let me take you to London oh, Town. Look how beautiful that is. Current weather is 67 degrees, and they're just about sunset time. I have so many stories from my trip to London mm -hmm. to tell you about, but we don't have time today. Uh, but uh, they had a little bit of a warming trend earlier in the week. What's so yes, funny, Celeste? Because what? I mean, your stories are the best. Oh, well, oh, I know. You had me. Uh, I'm it. sorry, but I, really, I'm going to bring some more pictures in. But anyway, London. London is looking good, but they did have a heat wave, and it prompted at the Woburn Safari Park, get ready for it, the elephants uh -huh. to jump right in the water. And I love that picture, and Aww. cool themselves off. Don't have to tell an elephant how to cool off. Look how cute that is. Isn't that so great? Yes. Yeah. So this is about halfway between London and Nottingham. You know, the sheriff of Nottingham? Nottingham. Remember uh, Robin Hood men in tights? Yes, I do Yeah, remember. so about halfway between Nottingham and London, and a little bit of heat wave. Over there, a heat wave means like 78 Yeah, because or they, 80. Don't, they don't have air conditioning, right? And it's humid. <laughs> yeah, in most places, that's for sure. Look how cute that is. Hey, one other story we did just want to mention uh, for all, oh gosh, yeah, well, we don't, we, we, uh, we edit on the fly. Ready? Yes, Here we, we go. Yes, we do. Okay. So we have the Tesla that turned right onto the tracks. Come on. So the autopilot in California, this is Woodland, and the police showed up, and they're like, oh, yeah, that guy is stuck on the tracks. You know, I'm, I'm still skeptical of auto drive. I just well, am. Well, and what's he, oh, because the auto drive, that's how he ended up on the tracks? Yeah, you know, you let your car, oh. you pay extra for the software, you want to use it, and your car's like, really? Well, I got to take a left right here? Well, he should have waited and taken the left a little bit later. Yeah, that's not good. You don't want Teslas on the tracks. Here's the problem with AI again, Ron. This yes. is automated machines. Yes. They, they're just not as smart as humans just yet. Right. <laughs> um, Celeste, will you, until we can meet again next week, Yes. Uh, will you hold the thought on what ice cream flavor you want oh, returned no. to All the store weekend? shelves? Yeah, well, maybe you'll change your mind. Okay, no. <laughs> uh, okay, so we just, uh, sometimes we don't have enough time here on the show after the show. Uh, but I can tell you this. We are going to go to the mystery cam let's now. And let's just see when we do the mystery cam. Okay, there's a Denny's. Uh, do I have access? No, I don't have the, uh, yeah. 
Our, I don't have our usual. Well, let me actually try. Mystery cam. I found it, Celeste. It's graphics 14. Oh, yeah. I knew it with the emoji. Where in America would they have a Wendy's, a Staples, oh. a Denny's? And at the Speedway, gas is what? three ninety nine or 3 Is it? I don't Can know. Can you see it there? Where are you seeing the sign? Right, here. right there. Oh. 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 Three twenty nine. Yeah, well, that's your diesel price. That's all so confusing. Oh, it is confusing. You, did I tell you I was in South Carolina last weekend? Mm-hmm. Two ninety eight at the Circle <gasps> K. Oh my goodness! Come on, we that's can do awesome. better. Okay, so Dean'sFireworks dot com. <laughs> you know that's why Dean Fazzini pulled this shot up. <laughs> that's right. Dean's Fireworks. He's thinking, man, I could moonlight and make a million bucks. Okay, there's not a whole lot of mountains. No. Nope. So it's kind of flat. Right. But green. Yeah. Uh, but they got a Wendy's. Uh, you know, it's tires. pretty generic. I'm gonna go Missouri. What do okay, you like? Okay, I'm gonna go uh, like um, maybe like West Virginia. Oh, well, West Virginia, <laughs> almost heaven. <laughs> West Virginia. All right, here it is. Okay, uh, we're gonna Ooh, wrong. reveal the, the interrogation answer. camp. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Ron's usually right. Is it in West Virginia or is it in Missouri Ooh, or where? Indiana. Oh, Indiana wants me. Lord, I can't go back there. There was a song once oh, in the why, 60s. Why couldn't he was praying? Uh, he, no. Why he couldn't go back there? Uh, why? Because he was wanted for a crime. I'll tell you all about. It. We'll do six. <laughs> we'll do 60s music on another show. We got to run. It's already 10:30. Oh my God. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you guys on Monday.